Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah! We're going to talk about how to predict the products of a reaction. You know how to write chemicals now, but sometimes they don't tell you what the other side of the equation is. So if you analyze the left side of the equation, if you look at the reactants, and you find that you have two potential ions, one of them is a cation, and the other is an anion, it's a good bet that that's a synthesis reaction. If you analyze your reactants, and you find that there's three ions, two cations and an anion, or two anions and a cation, it's a good bet that that's a single replacement reaction. If you analyze the reactants and you find that there's two cations and two anions, that's a double replacement reaction. And then there's two more, and we'll talk about those in a second. Let's look at an example. The sodium here is not an ion. It doesn't have a charge. But if it were to become an ion, it would have a charge of plus one. Water as I hope you know by now, is actually made up of hydrogen and hydroxide. We look at this, and we see that we have three ions. This is probably going to be a single replacement reaction. It's probably not going to be a synthesis reaction. If we attempted to put these things together into some sort of monstrous monstrosity of doom, this would probably be a wrong answer. So, what's going to happen? You really only have one choice. This is a single replacement reaction and you've only got one option. If you put the hydrogen together with the hydroxide, you would get H2O and that would leave the sodium by itself and you can see that this would not be a reaction because no bonds have been rearranged. Therefore, this cannot be what happens. We can, however, put the sodium together with the hydroxide. If we put the sodium together with the hydroxide, that would give us NaOH. If the sodium ends up with the hydroxide, that would leave the hydrogen by itself. And when we have an element by itself, we have to ask ourselves, is it diatomic? So is the hydrogen diatomic? And the answer is yes. We've predicted the products for this reaction. The reaction's not balanced, but we could balance it at this point, and that's okay. Let's look at another one. Again, it helps a lot if you know your ions. If you're familiar with your ions, you'll be able to spot that the reactants are made up of silver and nitrate and magnesium and chloride. Now you'll notice that I'm making a vertical list underneath the reactants. I want to predict what the products are going to be. First, I have to know what type of reaction this is. There are four ions, two cations and two anions. That makes this a double replacement reaction. So I'm going to swap ions. At first glance, it looks like you've got a lot of options. In actuality, you only have one choice. If the magnesium gets together with the chloride, that would make MgCl2, and that would leave the silver to get together with the nitrate. If that happens, no bonds have been rearranged, therefore, this cannot be the products. If you try to put the silver together with the magnesium, you have a problem, because silver is plus one, and magnesium is plus two, and you cannot put these ions together. You can only put cations together with anions. So at that point, the only thing that you can do is to put the silver together with the opposite anion, the chloride. If you put the silver together with the chloride, you would get silver chloride. Don't forget to balance the charges when you put them together. If you put the silver together with the chloride, that leaves the magnesium to get together with the nitrate. Now remember that when you do this, the cation has to come first when you write the compound. So 
So it's magnesium nitrate, not nitrate magnesium. And you have to balance the charges, so be intentional about listing out the two ions and balancing the charges like you were taught. Now this equation is not balanced, but that's okay. We can balance it later. This aluminum is not an ion. It does not have a charge. This oxygen is not an ion. It does not have a charge. But if they were to become ions, you would predict that the aluminum would have a charge of plus 3, and you would predict that the oxygen would become oxide with a charge of negative 2. Two ions, one a cation and one an anion, means that this would be a synthesis reaction. We're going to take these two ions and we're going to put them together. The aluminum has a charge of plus 3, the oxide has a charge of minus 2. A common mistake that beginners make is to simply carry the subscripts over and that would be wrong because the charges don't balance. You've got to do the work to figure out how to balance the charges and then and then you write the resulting compound. So this is a synthesis reaction. It's what you get when you have something that has the potential to be cation that gets together with something that has the potential to be an anion. Now you would need to go back and balance this reaction. Oh, what is this? This is a decomposition reaction. You can spot the decomposition reaction because there's no plus sign. It's just the one thing and then the arrow. So you have one compound and it's breaking down. What are your choices for things to break down into? For example, could it break down into this? No, because lithium has a charge of plus one and oxide has a charge of minus two, that's not a valid compound. Could it break down into this? Th that's silly, it's the same thing, you can't do that. So what can it break down into? It could break down into its two separate elements. Well, the problem is, when you write the elements by themselves in their ground state, you have to ask yourself, are they diatomic? Is lithium diatomic? No. Is oxygen diatomic? Yes. So don't carry over the subscripts Look at each individual compound that you get ready to write, each individual element, one at a time, and do them correctly one at a time. Now, the subscripts don't work out. This equation is not balanced, but that's okay. We can go back and balance this using coefficients now. Da! Ah! A common mistake that beginners make is to look at this equation and think that it must be a synthesis reaction. Or to try to figure out if this is perhaps a single replacement reaction. But if you know your ions, you know that C2H5 is not an ion. So that's not C2H5+, plus, and that's not hydroxide. So this is not a single replacement reaction. This is actually the fifth type of reaction, a combustion reaction. A combustion reaction, specifically the combustion of a hydrocarbon. We're keeping it very basic for this video. A hydrocarbon has carbon, hydrogen, and or oxygen. So this thing is a hydrocarbon and when you burn a hydrocarbon you add oxygen to it to burn it and that will always 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 produce CO2 and H2O. So the combustion of a hydrocarbon always produces carbon dioxide and water. 
And then you would need to go back and you would need to balance this equation. Okay, let's see how you're doing. Here's a reaction, pause the video, and figure out what the products would be. We have sodium ions, we have oxide ions, we have the potential to have fluoride ions. The sodium would get together with the fluoride to produce sodium fluoride leaving the oxygen to be by itself and when oxygen's by itself it's diatomic. Try this one. Pause the video and predict the products. We have to figure out what kind of reaction this is. This is a combustion of a hydrocarbon so we know the products will be CO2 and H2O. Figure out what kind of reaction this is and then predict the products. It really helps if you know your ions. The ions here are ammonium and acetate, barium and dichromate. This must be a double replacement reaction. So we're going to put the ammonium together with the other person's anion. So the ammonium is going to get together with the dichromate that's going to make ammonium dichromate. If the ammonium gets together with the dichromate that leaves the barium to get together with the acetate. To make barium acetate. And then we would have to go back and we would have to balance this equation with coefficients in order to make this equation obey the law of conservation of mass. But don't try to make it obey the law of conservation of mass using subscripts. The subscripts are for balancing charges. Try and figure out what this would produce. Pause the video First figure out what type of reaction it would be, and then predict the products. We want to look at how many ions there are. There's aluminum and sulfide, and we have the potential to have oxide. That's three ions that makes this a single replacement reaction. Can I put the sulfide together with the oxide? No. I'm going to put the aluminum together with the oxide. Aluminum has a plus three charge, oxide has a minus two charge. Need another oxide, need another aluminum, need another oxide. This would be Al2O3 plus when the aluminum gets together with the oxide that leaves sulfur by itself. Now whenever you write an element by itself, you have to ask yourself, is it diatomic? Is sulfur a diatomic? The answer is no. So these are the products. What could this be? This must be a decomposition reaction. The reason for that is there's no plus sign in the reactant side. Figure out what this would decompose into. If you decided that this would decompose into hydrogen and hydroxide, you're probably wrong, because you can't have ions just floating around on their own. This is going to decompose into its elements, hydrogen and oxygen. It's the only thing it can break down into. Now when you write elements in their ground state, you have to ask yourself, is this diatomic? So is hydrogen diatomic? The answer is yes. Is oxygen diatomic? The answer is yes. And now you would go back and balance the equation. 
We want to figure out what the products would be. Pause the video and see if you can do this one. Magnesium's not an ion, but if it were, it would have a charge of plus two. Nitrogen's not an ion, but if it were to become one, it would have a charge of minus three. We would predict that this would be a synthesis reaction because we have two oppositely charged ions that we can put together to make a balanced compound. So let's go ahead and put those together in a balanced compound. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Need another magnesium. Cancel, cancel. Need more negatives. Cancel, cancel. Need more positives. Cancel, 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 cancel. Yay! And we're done. And so that would make Mg3N2. Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah! Yeah, 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 yeah.